Anybody but my Imagine Dragons. This new Imagine Dragons album? He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. No. No. It's not good. Origins is the fourth full length wow. album from Las Vegas, Imagine Nevada Dragons. pop rock band. Imagine Dragons, who up until this point I've not really been a big fan of because of their reputation and, and typical sound. Basically overblowing the trappings of pop rock to the point where they are arena-sized, soulless. I can't say I've heard a single Imagine Dragons song that I didn't think was overly dramatic, overproduced, blown up to the point where the band is making these mountainous songs out of molehills. You know, in most situations, I think I would have just let this album fly under my radar and and just went on living my life. But honestly, I was challenged to try it. My curiosity got the best of me and, you know, w worst fears confirmed. Kicking things off on this record, the opening track is actually not that bad. It has one of the more solid tunes on the entire record. But what bugs me about this song is that this band is four albums in and yet they don't really have a strong definitive sound I could tether directly to them as the first thing you're showing me here sounds like a bad mashup of Coldplay and the Foo Fighters. Which is a pretty prevalent mix of influences throughout this entire LP. A lot of the time the vocals don't really know whether or not they want to dig down deep and give that guttural David Grohl or just croon really softly and maturely like a Chris Martin. And honestly there are some melodies and song structures on this record that aren't that bad, but truly what makes this record so distasteful to me is that it falls into a lot of the same traps and cliches that many millennial pop acts do who are trying to write music that sounds so crucial, as if this record is defining a cultural moment with its faux cinematic, blown out, compressed to hell instrumentation, the melodramatic vocals, the fake deep lyrics. The song Boomerang is one of the most annoying, repetitive, up, down, on again, off again relationship songs I've ever heard. And I pray the day they invent time travel never happens, because if it does, I'm taking the song back to 1994 and convincing Peter Gabriel to destroy all of his masters up until that point. Because, yeah, it just kind of sounds like an awful modern millennial take on a Peter Gabriel song. The song Machine is an even strange headache and combination of themes and musical ideas. The sound of this thing is really heavy, it's clunky, it's like listening to industrialized pop rock. Simultaneously the lyrics are about being a part of some sort of underclass, whether that be a social underclass or an economic underclass. And I'm just not gonna be a part of the machine anymore, bro! I'm just not gonna be a part of this machine! The chorus is a terrible revision of I love rock and roll! So put another dime in the jukebox, baby! So having mentioned all that, this song is like a socialist, steampunk, Joan Jett ripoff whose goal is revolution, but all it ends up being is revolting. So, <laughs> halfway there. And like many other millennial pop acts, I feel Imagine Dragons also suffer on this album from a case of boring verse syndrome, where you have a singer or a songwriter or a band structuring a song out, and the hook really pops, it might have a great melody, it might have a grand burst in instrumentation or volume, and it hits hard, it's an exciting moment, it's a great transition, but the verse leading up until that point is absolutely boring. The singing is super subdued, not much of a strong melody to speak of, the instrumentation is stripped back to its barest of necessities. It just seems like these moments are meant to put the audience into a boring, chilled out lull, so once that chorus finally hits, it's BAM! What makes the problem problem worse for Imagine Dragons, though, is they're putting too many eggs into too few baskets, the baskets being the choruses, and the, the choruses aren't even that great. In fact, most of the time they're annoying. <laughs> this is like the worst Bon Iver chorus imaginable, mixed with a touch of chill wave, I guess, with the instrumentals kind of glistening retro synths. Also, by this point on the album, I've kind of realized that the mix sucks. The mixes on these songs are awful, not only because the vocals are not really good enough to be this upfront and in your face, but also because the compression on these songs is wow. To the point where even the softer tracks on this thing sound blown the hell out. Super smooth glacial walls of synthesizers and bass just kind of crushing down any vocals that are mixed into it once the instrumentation swells on the hook, making the vocals sound like they're being pulled through a trash compactor. Another unfortunate thing about this album, because if the compression was not quite as bad, if the 
hooks and even a great deal of other parts on this album weren't so brick walled, I think a lot of these songs would be more listenable. And listen, I'm not some soldier fighting the other side in the loudness war. A lot of the time, I don't really mind modern music production. I think compression can be a great tool and it has its place, it has its time. But there are moments in which it is blatantly overused and this is a prime example of that. The awful and corny choruses on this thing keep coming and coming and coming. I'm a bad liar! I'll be, 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 I'll we Didn't Start the Fire, and then there's like this radio rock, this pop punky radio rock song from the 90s or the 2000s that I cannot place when I listen to this thing, but God, it's killing me whenever I listen to it. Once again, I can appreciate that Imagine Dragons pull from a pretty wide array of influences across the pop spectrum, but God, they throw them into the worst repackaging. Hello, hello, let me tell you what it's like to be a zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> this song sounds like if Coldplay didn't take themselves too seriously and just decided they're gonna go full Smash Mouth. That being said, I could foresee society moving into a dystopian future where basically Wreck-It Ralph replaces Shrek in, in like meme culture and this song essentially becomes the new all-star. Now, if it wasn't enough for the choruses on this album to be terrible, uh, the instrumentals actually start getting awful too. And keep in mind, the mixes and compression are still absolute garbage. The lead vocals on the song Bullet in a Gun are really distant, really raw and overacted. They are surrounded with this very skeletal instrumental with a kind of lo-fi, stuttering bit of percussion. I really can't place stylistically where the band was trying to go with this. It sounds kind of experimental in a way, like something you might find in a 10 Tricks Point Never or a Death Grips or maybe like a an MIA song back in the day. <laughs> I have to admit, I do find the very dark themes of bipolar disorder and depression and suicide in the lyrics on this track kind of intriguing, specifically filtering these feelings through the pressures of, of being an artist, dealing not only with accusations of being a sellout by your fans, but maybe also some negative criticisms too. So I guess let the record show that I don't totally mind the messaging and the intention behind this song, but the musical package that it's held within doesn't really make it any easier to swallow. The song Digital is maybe my least favorite on the entire record as it features the messiest song, the most blown out chorus on the entire record. It's like this album with its awful compressed production is a really long elaborate bass boost meme that gets heavier and heavier and heavier as it goes along. And after multiple listens, I'm still not sure if I can make heads or tails of this song, there's very little about this specific track that is coherent. Not just because of the production and the sound and the mix, but there are multiple vocal lines that don't really match up. The breakbeat percussion on this cut is absolutely horrendous. The folkier passages seem to clash really heavily with the more electronic passages. It's really garish and one of the most awful uh, amalgamations of ideas and aesthetics I've heard in a while. Thankfully, the band really kind of lets listeners off a, a, a little easy with some more easygoing songs toward the end. Uh, the way the track Stuck uh, kicks off, if I squint my eyes and I just pretend I'm in a different place, I could kind of see my way to it being like, I don't know, a Vampire Weekend song produced for Taylor Swift fans. That is until on the hook we get one of the worst vocals on the entire record featuring uh, this totally strained, horrendous, time goes by! Yeah, this is not a great vocal performance. Between these three words, we have such an incredible boost in volume and aggression. Time goes by! The closing track is kind of cute though in that, yeah, it's, it's another kind of blown out chorus, awful sound. It, it's basically like, 
Pop's answer to tinnitus. But the song hilariously ends off with this refrain, where did we all go wrong? Literally at the very end of the track. And yeah, I mean, I I agree. If, if this was something that I had a hand in, that is the first thing that would come to my mind once it was finished. Where, where did we all go wrong? Yeah, this uh, Imagine Dragons album, it's not good.